Hi, welcome to the Predator Arm Block Series. Um, today again I have Andy Carter and Rich Moreno training with me. Andy will be in the gi, Rich will be outside of the gi. Andy, um, what I'm going to work on first is a standing arm bar. And what this will do, this will, this is uh, pretty simple because what it is, it's a straightforward attack by uh, my opponent. Um, rather than going to the ground, a lot of people would like to think that they could finish uh, an attack directly on their feet. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, just like everything else in the fighting world. If this man locks up, grabs hold of me, and I can push away and get him extended, I reach around, grab the wrist. If he has a gi on, I grab the sleeve. Because this, what the gi is, is just like a bunch of suitcase handles. Here, 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 here. That's the nice thing about a gi. What you gotta also remember about a gi is it's also a suitcase handle for this guy against your own arm. If you grab it, you better use it fast or else let go of it and get out of there. That's where most people get hurt is they linger too long. They get in there and they forget what they're doing. They're thinking, okay, this guy's got some pajamas on. I'll just grab hold and I'll, I'll direct him around. Well, this guy's trained to wear this gi. And in such training, he knows how to use it against you. That's the whole purpose of having it. So when this man attacks me here using a gi, I reach across. I automatically have it here. I grab it tight here. I give it a little twist. It tightens it more. You should notice that I reach over the elbow. When I reach over the elbow to, to grab the sleeve, it's a tight reach. It helps me pinch this. I can step in this guy. I got an arm bar here. I can grab it here. I can now step over. I'm going to arm bar here. Watch my feet. Again, balance is the big key in fighting. If I walk in here and my feet are together, I can do everything up here perfectly. Boom. So I'm falling down. You have to use your whole body when you fight. Boom. You see my wife? I have a nice stance. It's about shoulders width apart. I turn my hips. I'm not just reaching with my hand and continuing facing the opponent. I'm turning. Just like a man throws a discus. Boom. I grab here. I've got him tight here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it in a big circle over my head. I'll drop my hips as I pivot my feet. I pivot my feet, drop my hips, duck my head underneath. I also use this hand. Now I have an advantage. I have two hands against his one hand. Boom. Now I'm kind of in an awkward position, you would think, but he's in a more so awkward position. I have a tight grip on this gi. Now I just take a step forward, step back. I switch my feet. You'll see that these feet are like this. All I'm doing is switching the position where they are. Left foot goes where the right foot is, and right foot goes where the left foot is. Boom. Now I'm over the elbow. I have this man's arm trapped. Now this man, all I want to do is look up at the stars now. I want to take, take his arm with me. When I look up at the stars, I don't look up like this. This part stays down. This is my leverage. That's the key with all these arm locks is leverage. Boom, you have a joint here. This joint works this way and this way. This joint does not go any farther than this. If it does, well, you better sign up because you'll be great. I have a tight grip, tightening the more so on his wrist. Boom, I go down against his joint. You'll see, boom, we tie up, break free, grab it, step over, boom. Now you see I drop my weight. My weight comes down. This also lowers the man's arm. I can, if I leave it up here and I drop, boom, it snapped. Again, I don't want to go around breaking my workout partner's bones. Protect your workout partners. Your workout partners are the most significant items of equipment that you have. Protect them and they'll protect you. They're your family. Again, we are here. This man grabs here. I grab here. I step over. Boom. Again, this man grabs here. Now I can grab here this time. I can push his head away here. I can step here. I curl up. As I curl up, I come underneath his elbow. All right. 
Let's go through this again. Now watch it from this angle because sometimes you don't see everything from one side, so we're going to show you a different side. Again, this man ties up. I reach over, pop it around. See my feet? Now I switch my feet. Now I will drop my hips. I'm shifting my balance. Boom. Very simple, but it has to be done quickly. If I come up here and I linger here, this man will lock up and throw me. All your moves have to be quick and precise. Now, if necessary, I can also do a foot sweep from this position. Well, that's another tape. On this one here, um, what it is, uh, it's, you'll see Rimtar, Rimco Pardue did it against a fighter um, in UFC 7, I believe it was. Rimco grabs the man's arm, step into him, pull his weight down. Now, what Rimco did is come up slowly and bash him with an elbow. What I'm showing you here, come up underneath this elbow. You've got it tightened here. You've got a grip of this thing. Come underneath, grab his elbow. Now switch your hand, come on top. Now you have an arm bar. What you have to do, again, you have to do it quickly because he has a free hand over here. And what he's gonna do is just slap you in the back of the head or something. All these moves are, you, you practice them slowly, but you perform them quickly. He's here, watch my feet. This foot pivots, this foot steps in deep. This foot steps in deep, bring my body deep against his body. Sorry, boom, I drop. Now I'm underneath here, I lean up against, I come down. Now I switch my hand, my hand goes from here to here. You don't have to go like this, it's just a quick movement. Be careful, because it'll break. You're already underneath the joint. The whole idea behind these arm locks is to go against the joint at the joint. Arm lock doesn't necessarily work four inches up on the forearm. It can, but it's a lot more difficult than if you're exactly on the elbow. You can also grab this arm here. If we're, we're fighting, and I got him here, I can jerk him free, come up, boom. Let's do that again. You don't have to be tied up for this one. What we can do here with, for hand fighting, we're at a distance, I can grab this guy here, jerk him free, step in, come down on top of his arm here. Now, let me get it from this angle here. When I step in, I generally step in above the elbow, here. I'm stepping in, dropping my weight. Now, when we both come down, my arm slides up to the elbow. I start behind, and now slides up. So it's already secured, it's there. All I have to do is rotate my hand, get on top, apply pressure. Let me show how this works above the elbow. Same move. I'm going to use Rich here because Rich doesn't have a gi on. This, you grab the wrist, step in. You see how my hand goes above the elbow? Hand goes in deep. I step in, I drop. Now when we fall, it slides up to the elbow. I rotate it over. That's just a variation of that move, Andy. Um, that move can be used for a different situation. It's not necessary in an arm bar. If you don't want to go tight, you can go loose and just take the man down. Um, like I said, every move has a basic move, but then you add your little tricks to it. And once you add your little tricks to it, nobody else in the world knows that trick unless you share it with the world. And that's the secret to fighting. All right, this next move is what um, Olympic champion Mark Schultz used in the 1984 Olympics. I uh, used it against a Turkish wrestler and broke the guy's arm. Rich, um, what happened was the opponent shot in on Mark, 
suck, seizing the single leg. Mark then grabbed the opponent's forearm, reached in through the opponent's arm over top here um, with a key lock. He kicked in, jumped into position and kicked the opponent over. And when he kicked the opponent over, the, the uh, key lock takes place and breaks the arm. Right there. We'll get it from this side. I have to be real careful. Again, protect, protect your workout partners. Rich is hurt. I didn't hurt him. So <laughs> but we have to protect him. Again, he has a single leg. What I'm going to do here is I'm trying to keep him from sucking the single leg up a lot tighter to where he has the advantage. I've got to fight him at, to stay away. At the same time I'm staying away, I have to work my way in. I'm working his head. I'm coming down here. Now I'm sinking this in. Now I'm dropping and kicking, breaking his arm. How this works is a basic key lock on the arm. But when I extend myself here, I reach over, I'm extended, I kick my opponent over. And when that kick propels his body over, it brings enough momentum to snap the arm. Rich. Again, right here, he shoots in. I want to control his head right away. If you don't have hand control, you have head control of your opponent. Now, I come down here. I'm staying away. I'm working away. I'm fighting him with his head off. Now I grab hold of his arm. Now I'm working in. I work in. I drop and kick. Again, my opponent shoots in. If his head comes in, you want to shove it outside. At this point, you have, enough, you have enough strength to control the man's head. That's what you want to do. You want to control the man's head. You control his hands or his head. Boom. Drive his head out. Grab his wrist. I'm now trying for hand control. So I'm doing both the basic necessary components. Hand control, head control. Once I have head control, I shove his head out of the way. I now grab the hand control. Now you see where my, my leg is down here. Now I'm sucking in tight. I've got my lock. But... My lock isn't very effective until I suck in tight and I kick. I extend my foot, I'm dropping my rear end at the same time. You'll see my, I hop in tight, I drop my rear end, bringing me down and kicking my foot at the same time. Arm lock supplied. All right, the leverage I have here is the same thing you'll see in a standard arm, uh, key lock. A key lock when you're on top of the man. But at this point, I'm, obviously I'm not on top of the man, I'm on the side, but I'm applying the same amount of pressure. I'm bringing down the elbow, at the same, I'm sorry, I'm bringing down the hand, at the same time I'm jacking up the elbow. This way I have more leverage than he does. I have two hands on his one hand, which gives me the advantage. Same thing as if I were here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a Saturday night ride. Saturday night ride is um, a wrestling move, and it's basically was named by some Cretan High School uh, wrestling coach who called it for what it is. What it is, this man's on top, side down, and you hook both, both ankles. Both my ankles are hooking both his ankles. What we'll do, we'll, we'll turn around here. Boom. This is the hook. This is how this is. What happens in wrestling is they hook a double underhook and they pin their opponent. Here now, what we're doing is going for an arm bar. I have the Saturday Night right. Therefore, my hips are controlling this man's hips. And what I'm doing is I'm using the um, man's own leverage against him. If I'm in tight, he tries to bridge out, he gets, it gets tighter. Now I go over for a key lock with that Saturday Night Ride. What I want to do in these key locks is treat it like it's a paintbrush, okay? Paint. Paint the mat with it. Paint the mat with it. See these people grabbing it and cranking it and all that? It doesn't do a thing. You want to get in here, you want to get it tight. So if I'm on top of this man, I've got the Saturday Night Ride on him. I suck in, boom, I'm painting this in. See how I draw this in tight? 
All right, when I've gotten here, like I said, the same thing I did on the Mark Schultz key lock. This is a key lock. I'm fighting this, man. I have the arm, hands tight in here, the um, ankles tight in here. I distract him, putting an elbow into his face. Now he's more concerned about his face, getting his face free, getting the pressure off, getting a little bit of air. When he reaches to grab my wrist, I now grab his wrist. I take this hand and slide this hand underneath. He's, I'm letting him feed this move by himself. I'm here applying pressure. He wants to get it clear. Boom. Now I have my key lock. I'm also locked in down here on the feet to where he can't roll me. Now I start the pressure. See how I brought it in. I have the angle. Again, pressure. He wants to remove it. I grab his wrist. I suck this in between. Now I, I raise my elbow up. Paint. Paint the picture. Okay, this next move is when the opponent shoots in. And you, you get a sprawl and you shove the opponent down. Opponent shoots in, boom, head control. Sprawl, the opponent's down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for an arm bar from this position here. I can hook in like this. I got him trapped there. Again, the opponent shoots in. Head control, people, head control. I grab hold of the back of his head. I sprawl out. Now he's carrying my weight. I'm controlling his head. He's looking down. Now I rotate my hips. Come in. Hook. Now I have his arm tied up. I can grab back here and pull up, or I can just let my hips do it. Slide down on top of the man. That way the man's carrying your weight. Again, the man shoots in. Head control. Sprawl out. I rotate my hips. When I rotate my hips, it brings his hand in between mine. Here he starts out, his hands on the outside. Head control, rotation, take a small step back. Now I suck this up. I can put my elbow on his head and reach back and pull this. Or I can just slide right down. Very fast, very effective um, armbar. All right, this next move is uh, called a Seisenbacher. It was named after Peter Seisenbacher, who was a two-time Olympic gold medalist for Austria. Um, Seisenbacher perfected this move um, to the point it's such a quick move, it snaps the elbow immediately. Where in judo, uh, it requires three seconds for the uh, person who has the arm bar applied on him. It requires three seconds for, for him to have the ability to tap. Uh, the Seisenbacher is so precise and so quick, it doesn't allow you any time at all. Um, you can start this, again, if the man shoots on you, you can step down. Now I'm controlling the man. You see where my weight is. All my weight's over here, controlling the man. What I want to do is step over, and when I step over, I step in deep. I'm deep and tight. You see where my foot is. When I say step over, I'm not saying I'm stepping over here. I'm maintaining weight on my opponent, stepping in tight. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in this direction here. I'm going to hook this arm with this, uh, hook his right arm with my left arm, and um, now there are several different variations you can do. Once I hook this, I'm continuing to fall. You want to protect your own face here. Now what I can do is I can apply a knee to his face and come down here. That's variation one. Again, here, maintain control, step in tight, hook, step in, brace apart, go to your belly. Seisenbacher, what you want to do is your hips go in against the man's elbow. There's the pressure. I'm here, have control of the man's gi. Step in, hook. What you can see, you see how we're rolling at one point, and it almost looks like we're going to go to my back. But that's okay, because I'm in control of the situation. I can prevent that. I'm here. I step in. Boom. 
I have this handle again. Again, the gi is a handle. Now, that move can be done without a gi also. Whereas you don't grab the, the, um, the sleeve itself, you grab the man's wrist. Um, what we also have here, a variation. Again, you maintain control. You step in tight, you hook, you dive, you step over. Boom. When you do it this way, as you can see, you're going to lift the man's chin up with your leg. You're coming in tight. Now I have control. Not only are my hips going down, but my legs coming up. Again, maintain control of this man. Let him carry your weight. Step in. Now what do you have? You have Juju Katami. Again, you maintain control. Step in, hook. Come down. Lift this chin. All right, for the next move, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the size in Bakker, but what happens here is we'll roll onto our back directly into Juji Katami. And Juji Katami is what I'm going to do then is uh, show you about three or four variations on that. Again, you have the move. You step in tight. You hook. You go down. I roll over. The man then rolls over. Now I'm coming down. I'm pinching my knees together. This is Juji Katami. Pinching my knees together, and uh, you can either lock your feet or leave them straight. Again, I'll show you some variations. But the, the main strength of this move is pinching your knees together and coming down, raising your hips. Again, what we're going to do is go from the Seisenbacher into the Juji Katami. I have control of the man. I step over. I'm stepping in deep when I step over. I'm rolling down, hooking a man's arm, coming down, rolling over. This is Juji Katami. Now the man's locking his arms, trying to prevent me from getting the move. When the man does that, the options I have now is I can, you generally start out here. What I can do, bring my left arm over, grab his wrist here, grabbing my arm, again a key lock. It opens it up. You can bring it back here, now the, the lock is applied. Again, generally you're starting here, reverse it here, come in here, lock up here, break it free. I'm pinching in with my knees as this move goes. This is where the strength of the move is. All right, again, there's very subtle points into this um, gatami here. What you're doing here is you want to curl the man's body up with your heels, pulling him to your body. Also. You can't grab here and start pulling. Curl your body up. You curl your body up. Now what you want to do is use your whole body to break his two hands. Boom, comes back like this. If the man's strong, what you can do, bring your heel inside here. This is another bit of leverage. Another thing against the man. It's like holding your arm against the telephone pole. You can only hold on for so long. Now what you're doing is you're press, using the strength of your leg against his arm. Obviously the leg is stronger than the hands. I'm here, boom, hips come up. To apply this, hips come up. You're pulling this down, hips are coming up, pinching the knees, curling the heels in. Curling the heels in, pinching the knees, hips come up, pulling the hand down. This is um, called the modern version. Okay, where both, both legs are over top. Old style is where one leg's underneath. Now you also have, you have my right leg is underneath his back, my left leg is over top of his face. I'm tied up here. If the man is tight, is, is hard to fight, I can put some pressure against his face here. Get a little bit of a distraction. That, I, I play with his face, it distracts him against the arm bar. I'm here, I curl up, now I come back down. This is the old style. And like I said, new style is here. When you have the advantage of the new style is that you can hold his body down with your leg. You can put your hand inside the crook of his arm against his bicep, pull back. 
Now also, what you have here is if you can reach up, he's fighting you here. Now what you do is grab his lapel here. Walk up, you have a double arm bar. You just grab this, locked up tight here. Which one do I break is the decision. Again, here, tie here. Make your choice. Now, next variation of Jujik Tommy. Say we're going back into the new style. Now what we're going to do is what's called a pillow. I rotate my hips down, my leg comes underneath his head. I lock up, lock my feet. If I want to, I can bring this over. Go to a triangle choke. Here's your triangle choke with an arm bar. Again, start off with the, with the new style. Rotate your hips down. Get my head, my leg underneath his head. Lock up my feet. Curl up, lock. I'm squeezing with my legs against his head. When I pull the arm extent, now my hips come up. All right, this next move is what we like to call the Steve Owen special. Steve Owen is a great judo fighter, and uh, he taught this to us in his dojo. And I don't, I'm sure it's been around before that, but this is the first time I've seen this. Um, what happens here is if the man can either have this hand here or separating your hands. This, this is not a worry. This is not what we're worried about. If I'm in the side mount position here, I'm on top of this guy. Um, what's going to happen eventually is he's going to get tired of me hitting on him and he's going to want to try to break me free. When he does, I start up, I draw his, draw his arm up into here. As you see how his body curls up. I got him tight, I'm pinching him with my, with my um, neck. I, I come in low, slide up to the elbow. I go the other side. Again, we're here. This guy's tired of this. What he would do is press against the face, boom, it's applied. What I want is I want this man to push against me. I want to aggravate his face. I want him to push me off. Again, like I said, I can either go this way or I can come straight in with a palm slap into his elbow. I'll do it here. That's the pressure you want, but you're going to apply it up here at the elbow. I'll do it the other arm now. Oh, this I'm here, pop. As you see, I curl the weight in towards my body. I have his head trapped against my knee, have his torso trapped against the other knee. He can't, he can't come in. What I'm doing here is I'm extending his arm with my shoulders. I'm popping the elbow, fighting up against the guy, pointing him into me. Again, you have a variation, you're starting low, come in or you just pop at the elbows. I'm going to do it with Rich also, without the gi, so that you can see a little bit more clear as the joint positioning. Rich is here, he pushes off. I start down low and slide it up. This is what really works when um, the man does not have a gi on and we're all sweaty. What's going on here is we're allowing the sweat to do the work for us. Start low, Sweat will let you slide straight up. Once it hits the joint, it'll stop automatically. You step into the man, putting pressure. Again, when the man pushes you off, just come right up with it. Again, the man pushes you off, pop it here. Quick pop with, with both flat of the hands, right at the elbow joint. This is probably one of the most vicious arm bars you'll ever see. If you want to even nastier, you can turn it. You twist it, boom, it'll be a nice spiral break. Guy will never fight again. All right, on this move here, like I said, you'd be applying pressure on this man's face. I'm extending it here, but once he pushes up, now my body curls up. I'm pulling this man into me. You see, when I grab it tight, his skin will come up. His skin will roll right up. Uh, generally, if, if won't do that if you're both sweaty, but the, the sweat will help you slide right up to the joint. Um, sometimes when you're, when you're real dry, you can you'll, you'll follow the skin right up. Again, pop it here, slide up here. Now, a variation on this. Once you have this here, you can work up here to the, 
to the wrist itself. Step over. I'm going to remain real tight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step over into Jujigatami. I'm going to remain tight, stepping over, let the man carry my weight, come back down, boom. Again, I curl the man up, let the man carry my weight, stepping over tight. St this, your knees pinch in, your hips come up. What that does is it just gives somebody else something a little bit more to think about. Again, the man pushes up, okay. you're here, step in tight, pivot on his body. Let his body carry your weight at all times. That way um, you're just carrying yourself, he's carrying himself, and you. Now I'm tight. Come in. Pop. You take the gold medal home. All right, this next arm bar here um, is a pretty nasty one. Uh, what this will end up doing is giving the man a uh, spiral break, which will probably do a large amount of damage. Um, it's something that you really don't want to do in competition. It's something that you should save for street defense because it'll be highly effective. Um, what's going to happen here is again, I have head control. Once I have head control of this man, I'm going to reach underneath his, um, his torso and behind his arm. When I do that, I grab hold of his lapel in what's called like a handshake uh, grip. Shutting him down, grabbing the lapel. Now what? He's carrying my weight, as always. Now I'm going to reach down here, grab his sleeve. I'm going to pull it out. Now what I'm going to do is duck my head in there and roll. If the man stays stationary, it's going to snap immediately. Or he could also roll. It's still going to break. Again, maintain control of this man's head. When you do, you shove him away, reaching, opening up a space for you to reach through, grab his lapel. Now I'm driving my shoulder. I'm letting him carry my weight. See how I shift my weight? Now he's carrying all my weight on him. I grab the sleeve of his, of his jacket. Now I'm going to put my head here and I'm going to roll under. If you see the motion of the arm, what's, going, what's happening here, this arm's rotating like this. No chance at all of getting out. Now my body's coming in and pushing against the joint itself as this, as this arm rotates. Again, I'm controlling the man's head. I'm reaching in. I'm controlling the man's head. I'm reaching in, grabbing his lapel. You can jerk him down. Let him carry your weight. Lean into him. I grab here. Now I'm going to straighten it out. Now I'm going to curl in. I'm going to try and go in real deep. You want to go in as deep as possible on all these moves. What, um, what I'm doing is I'm not going as deep as what I should because when you do, you apply a tremendous amount of pressure. I would suggest that you not go in exceptionally deep on your training partner either. Otherwise, you're going to run out of training partners. What you have here, step through. Again, what I'm doing is I'm creating space by grabbing, holding hold of this man's head. Hand control, head control. These are your greatest assets it's in this fighting situation. Here, now I can grab through. If I have problems grabbing the lapel, boom. Now I'll go right back to the head. Now I'm leaning into the man. I'm letting this man carry my weight. Boom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away one of these um, table legs. All tables have four legs. You take one away. That table's in trouble. Now, I grab hold tight. I'm going to rotate myself underneath. When I rotate myself underneath, what's going to happen? Well, this arm will go against this joint as it's twisting. Okay, this next move is a basic chicken wing. Uh, from high school wrestling. Uh, what you have here is if you're on top of the man, you're controlling his hips with your hips. Again, I have head con control of his head here. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to slip underneath, grab his wrist, or grab his gi sleeve. Now I'm going to turn in, pulling his arm out. Again, grab it here. You'll see my feet switch. Pulling his arm out. Now I'm applying pressure. I have it trapped between my thigh and my body. Again, I'm maintaining control. What I'm going to do is I want to make this man think that I'm going for a choke, just to distract him. Now I grab, I reach in here. Now I'm switching out. Now I've got the move. Again, we'll do this real slow. Again, always make him think you're doing something else. Lie to the man. You want to constantly lie to the man. Make him think you're doing something that you're not. He thinks I'm going here. Now I reach in. I grab hold of this. Now I'm rotating my body. When I rotate my body, my arm comes, follows it, and his arm comes with mine. Now I'm leaning back. Again, I'm lying to the man, making him think I'm going for the choke. What this does also is it creates a space for me to get my hand in. When I do, you'll see the rotation of the arm comes here. That's what happens when I step over here. Now my body goes up against him, letting him carry my weight. Now, a, a harder variation on this move and a more advanced level on this, uh, cause implement, you implement the uh, leg. What you're going to do here, you step in, come in here, step in here, reverse it. Again, you're here. You're turning in. Now, at this point, you need to maintain his hands here. Step in tight, coming through here, pop. Or once you bring it here, you can bring it here, come in, feed it through here like this, pop it here. I like the, I like the second way of feeding it through because what I'm doing is I'm maintaining weight on the man's body. I'm here. You see how I maintain weight on the man's body. Now, I slide this, pass this underneath my leg, pass it to this, this arm, <laughs> this leg hooks up this arm, now we're free to rock and roll. Okay, again, reach through, pull it through. When I pull it through, you'll see how my body is on top of this man's back. I pass it through, lift it up, hook here. Now, I can sit up. All the pressure's on this man's shoulder. It's going to break here, and it's also going to break at the shoulder. I'm going to sit down on the man's shoulder. When I sit down, I'm cocking up his hand, I'm cocking up his forearm, and the muscle sitting down on the shoulder, which breaks both simultaneously. Okay, this last one here is what we're going to do. My opponent will shoot in on me. What I'm going to do is underhook his arm. When I underhook his arm, I'll drive his head down. Step over, sit down on top of his arm, thus dislocating his shoulder. And shoots in, I underhook here. Now you see how I'm jamming his body now. I'm jamming into the man, step in, pop. And we're working, man comes in, I step in, step over. This man shoots in. I'm hooking here. I'm pulling up his arm here. You see where the, the leverage now is coming up against the shoulder. When I'm jamming in, he's in tight. Now I step over top. I step over top. Now you can see how all my weight, I sit down on his shoulder and I pull up on his arm. What that's going to do is disconnect his arm at the shoulder. You get to take it home as a trophy. I underhook here, you can pull him out, step over, you're on. Now you sit down, pull up. Very fast, very effective. Man shoots in, I've blocked it here. Rather than blocking and sprawling, 
I'm just going to meet the man. I'm shoving his head down. I'm underhooking his arm. What you can do now is let him come a little bit farther to where his foot goes down. Once his foot's down, you have a clear step. Now you see he's carrying all of my weight. I'm sitting down on his shoulder. I'm pulling up on his arm. This concludes the Predator Armbar series. These things are very dangerous. They're very precise and they're very quick. Always remember, if you have it on, you have to exercise restraint and control. You can break this man's arm at any time. If he yells give, walk away from the situation, both on the street and in competition. Remember, always protect your workout partner at all times. Your workout partner will protect you. Go hard in training, but go very careful, very intelligent. Don't just train hard, train smart. Go hard and good luck.